This is the best way to start with AI. Hello my friends, how are you doing? I'm back from my trip to Milano in Italy. It was an amazing week. I'm starting to learn a little bit of Italian, so buongiorno amici. O qualcosa di interessante per te. I have something interesting for you today. Let's get started. This is what I want to show you today. It is called Focus and it's great for beginners, but it's also a lot of fun for people who already have experience with AI. And yes, I've showed you that before, but this is version two. There are some cool new features. Now let's talk a little bit about why this is so good for beginners. First of all, as you've seen, it's a very simplified UI, an interface that is focusing on the fun of creating with AI. Now, the second reason why this is so great is because it is very easy to install. It is self-contained. You download the file, unpack it, start the bad file, and then everything is set up for you. It includes the Python it needs inside of the file. And finally, this will help you get started with AI in a much better way because the UI is designed in a way that it helps you generate better pictures. So let's have a look at how all of that works. First of all, you want to go to the GitHub page where you download everything. So when you scroll down here, you have some information and here it says installing focus. Click on that link and you can see here for Windows, you simply download this link here. It's a seven set file. So you either use seven set or WinRAR or anything else you need to unpack that. After you've unpacked that, find a location on your disk where you want to put that folder and then go into the folder. It's very clean as you can see here. There's a focus folder, a Python embedded folder, a run bed, a run anime bed, and then also a run realistic bed. Now the difference between these different beds is that they are set up for different aesthetics. So there's a little bit more improvement to help you get results of that kind. If you're not sure what you want to do or you want to just play around with the AI, just use the run bad file. When you first run that, it's going to set up everything for you, downloading the models you need. Of course, you can also download additional models if you want to. And as you can see here with the Python embedded folder, when you click on that and scroll down, you can see Python AXA is right in here. So you don't need to install Python separately from this. Now here's another thing you might want to know. There is the focus folder in here. Double click on that and scroll down. In there you're going to find a file called userpathconfig.txt. When you open that file up, you can see here a list of the model file, LoRa file, embedding paths and so on. And you can then link in here where you already have these files on your drive. So if you use any kind of other UI that has a folder with a lot of downloaded models, you can simply post the links in here. Now there's one specialty here and you can see this always uses double these lines. So you might want to add that to every part of the directory address so it is in the same style as the rest of all of these directories here. You can also see here that there are some default settings in here. For example, the default model that should be loaded at the start when you run Focus or the default LoRa you might want to use with this. Now at this point, it's important to point out that this is set up and optimized for using SDXL models. You can also use 1.5 models in a certain way, but the LoRa's all have to be SDXL models. But I said optimize. So here's the thing. Focus has been created, so it runs with a minimum GPU memory requirement of four gigabyte. That is very low, especially for using it with SDXL models. Now that we have an understanding of how to install everything and load our own models, here is how to use it. So this is the basic interface. Up here you get two images per render. Down here you put your prompt and then you have to generate buttons. So you can really spend most of the time in this area here and just play around with your ideas. 
However, if you want to go a little bit more advanced, down here you can see you have an advanced box. When you click on that, you have some additional settings. Now these settings are also simplified. So for example, for the performance, you can choose between speed and quality. You have here aspect ratios, which show you different kind of resolutions that go vertical or horizontal. As you can see, they are split here into two categories, which is the vertical one and the horizontal one below that. Below that, you can choose the number of images you want to have. And here you can set a negative prompt if you want to. Now there is one caveat with using focus and that is that your settings and your prompt is not saved inside of the image metadata as it is with automatic 1111, conf UI and other UIs. But you still have down here a history log where you can look at the settings and prompts you used last. Up here you can see we have different other tabs, for example for style. So when you click on that you have a very long list of different styles you can choose from. Now what these styles do is that they add keywords to your prompt. It's not showing up down here, so it keeps everything clean and simple. And a good thing here is you can choose multiple styles at the same time. Pre-selected when you first start Focus are Focus version 2, Focus Enhanced and Focus Sharp. But you can also choose any of these other styles to support what you want to create as an artistic style. For example, we have here photographic, cinematic, dynamic and also other things, other art styles like heroic fantasy or comic or luxury or art deco. So there's a lot of choices that you can choose from a very long list that you can activate to play around with that. And because you can choose these styles from the list, this makes it super simple for you to get very nice results without having to understand the complexity of all these different keywords and the prompt engineering. You just type the scenes you want to have. So here are some example scenes in different kind of artistic styles. Next up here we have the model tab and that's also very interesting because here you have the base model. It says SDXL only. Below that you can choose between different LoRa's, five of them maximum and you can choose the weight here with the slider. So that's also very easy. Now the interesting thing here is you can choose to use a refiner. Most community trained models have the refiner baked into the model, so you don't need that. But if you want to do that, you can choose between an SDXL or a SD 1.5 refiner. And that means you can render an image first in SDXL and then have it re-rendered in a 1.5 model to give it the style and look of that model. And that can really help to improve the quality and the artistic expression of your AI images. Now, the interesting thing here is when you choose a refiner model, you have down here a slider on where this is switching from the base SDXL model to the refiner model. And based on that, it will of course influence the outcome of your images. So play around with that, experiment with that. As you can see here, I'm re-rendering the image with the Epic Realism 1.5 model. That can give me some really nice and realistic results as you can see here with these examples. There is also another tab up here called Advanced. Now here you have some additional setting for the sampling sharpness and the guidance scale. So you can also play around with that. And below that there is a description of what these sliders actually do. So everything here is set up very easy for you. And in the advanced tab, you also have here the document link when you click on that. This is bringing you to this part of the website. And here it's specifically explaining to you how to move from mid journey 
to focus. So it explains here what you would usually do inside of mid journey and then explains how to do the same thing over in focus so that you have a really smooth transition to that UI. But we are not even done yet because when you scroll down, you can see here it says image input. And when you click on that, it's opening up this area and in the tab image prompt, you can actually load different sample images and they will be used as an inspiration for your image. So here on the screen right now, you can see the photo that I've used as an input and inspiration for the AI. And here you can see the output result that is very similar from the style and from the colors that are in the image. You also have a tab here for upscaling and creating variations that are either subtle or strong as on mid journey. To use that, you simply grab one of these images up here and drag it down here into that area and then choose what you want to do. There are no further settings in here. So this is kept as simple as it can be. And then you also have a tab for in painting and out painting. This works in the same way as you would expect from mid journey down here. You can expand the image to the left, right, top or bottom. And you can, of course, also choose multiple of them at the same time. And here on the right side, you have a small brush. When you click on that, you have a slider to set the size of the brush. And with that, you can mask out the area that you want to render that you want to replace. Now for that, you don't have to switch to anywhere else. You just use the prompt up here as before, just change what you want to change in the image and then click on generate. And instead of using the upper part to render the complete image, it's going to use the lower part here to in paint the image part you want to change. So as you can see, all of these elements are extremely intuitive and with the style selection list it makes it super easy to get amazing results in all kinds of artistic styles. So this really helps you getting into creating very nice images with AI. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.